Hi, welcome to this tutorial by Mihalik and Invicta Studios. I'm going to show you to go th how to go through the steps of a advanced inventory system. Uh, the first step should well, obviously be to create a new project, or if you have one, you can just load it up. Uh, I usually pick the first person because it's a little easier. Uh, make sure you have the starter content. Uh, it's a little easier to make assets later later on. Name it what you want. I'll just call it inventory uh, tutorial. My spelling is atrocious. I uh, create project. Uh, while this loads, I'll give you an overview of how it works. Um, uh, unfortunately, with the way the system I have set up, it has a start with pretty much the most complicated concept since that's the base of all of it and that works off uh, data structures and a data structure is an array or a list of arrays so it's just a list of lists um, so basically inside each item that you can pick up is going to be a list of all the different variables and different types of data that you want an item to have so to start off uh, you probably want to create I uh, go in blueprints and create a new folder called um, game blueprints inside the folder create under blueprints go to structure and name it item data structure and hit enter open that up and you can create as many variables as you you would like I usually start with name and that's a type string uh, a lot of times I like to have a texture for the thumbnail so I'll call that thumbnail and that is a texture type 2D or texture 2D next uh, depending on what you would like to have uh, you can set it if you want it to know if it's a tool or not whether you can eat it or use it which would be a consumable so I'll have that for this tutorial it's consumable because you can have it do different things when you pick it up like uh, you can even have one called is pickup so if it's not then you can't put it in your inventory I like to have let's see an item ID which I have it I set it up so each item you pick up will have its own unique ID which is useful when you want to have things like tools of the exact same blueprint but they have different data inside of it like different amount of uses it can have uh, if you want to have weight you can do that which is not how you spell it that'll be a type float and you can edit these later so it doesn't have to all be right now um, let's do item text data so when you click on it it'll bring up a list of every anything you want to say about it kind of like a tooltip in a way I guess and that'll be a string let's see and we'll probably add these later as I realize we need them but you can save that and I suppose minimize it the next step I suppose to be creating the inventory so go to my character and if you have a first person you'll probably want to break this so it doesn't fire the uh, bullets uh, that's right um, we need to add in the action event real quick so minimize that go to edit project settings input and here's the action mappings so add one call it 
interact. And this will be every time you hit a key, it'll interact with the object. It'll send out a line trace. So I usually set it to E. Right, now that that's set up, you can go back to my character. Type input interact and now it'll be under action events and let's set this over here so when you press E it needs to do what's called a line trace basically from your camera's position it'll send out a straight line a certain distance and if it hits an item or if it hits an actor it'll ha it'll bring back all the information about it so when it's pressed uh, do line trace by channel. We need to get the start position. So go to the first person camera, drag and get off of this pin pull out, and we'll get world rotation or er, location. So this will get the exact world space in the X, Y, and Z of where that begins. Next, uh, drag off of this, get forward vector. So it'll see which way you're facing, and we need to multiply that by a certain amount so it sends out that line. Vector by float. You just set that to about 400. If you wanted to make this a variable that you could edit real quick, um, you could create a variable called uh, trace distance or interact distance or whatever and li link it up so you can edit it a little easier, but I don't need to do that because I generally know what I like. And set that to the end. And we'll test that real quick. Uh, do a draw debug and we'll do persistent. Uh, make sure this ignore itself is checked. When I first learned this, it took me over an hour to figure out that that single thing was the thing causing the problem. Compile and save. And let's play. So you run around, press E, and you can see it traces in the direction I'm looking. Although it's a little offset. Alright, so when, every time we trace this, what we're going to need to do is save the actor that gets hit so we can get the data about it. So pull this out, break the hit results, and this is all the data you can get from any time the line trace, trace hits something. So we'll, we want the hit actor, so you can just pull this out and promote the variable, and then we'll say actor targeted alternatively you could manually create a variable but this is a little faster uh, we need to set it to this but we also want it to be a branch and I'll explain why in a moment so you can link this value up so it if you hit something it'll be true if you miss and it's nothing but air it'll be false so if it's true it needs to hit the actor targeted if it's false we need to set it to blank and the reason this matters is because say there's a gold coin or something on the ground and you let them line trace and pick it up it'll save it as an actor targeted and they'll be able to do whatever you want them to do with it but if they look up in the air and they keep hitting the button for line trace, this is still going to be, um, it's still going to have the coin saved. So they'll be able to just spam the coin. So you want it, if it's false, to set it to empty so they don't have the data. So they basically can't cheat and then it drops out bugs. So this is the line trace. 
Um, I usually just make it a function since I use it so often in different ways. I'll call that line trace store hit. I go back, get all this, cut it, and just pop it in. So every time this function fires, it's basically going to save the actor or empty it out if it misses. And you can just pull this over. Every time it's pressed, it does this. And I think that's where we'll stop for this video. Uh, next, we'll pick up and keep going with it and um, add in the actual inventory array. So, pile and save, and I'll pick up with you next time.